Hello, this is Steve Geischer coming to you with another Parts Now Tech Tip. Today I want to talk about the embedded web server and how to do a firmware upgrade through the embedded web server. The embedded web server being I open up a web browser, I type in the IP address of the printer on the network, it pulls up and from there I'm able to send it a file to upgrade the firmware. So we're going to go through the different steps of how do you do that kind of step by step through the whole process. One of the first things in the step here is I need to know, do I need to do a firmware upgrade? Does the machine really need that? Is that part of the troubleshooting process? Oftentimes people will get 49 type of errors and a lot of times those tend to be communication related errors where a firmware upgrade is you know, necessary for it. Inside uh, the firmware files as we get to downloading the files, there's a readme inside there as well. That's going to tell me all the fixes that this new version fixes from the prior versions before it as well. So good information that's out there. But first step here is I also need to know the, what level do I have on the printer right now? Because if it's current level, then why upgrade the firmware, right? So how do I find out? Well, a couple different ways of doing that. One is I can print off the configuration page. The configuration page, see here, so I've got the information here that's got circled in red. This is the firmware date code. And this is telling me the information that I need to know to say, hey, here's the current version on that machine. So all my firmware information's on there. From there, I can then go to HP's website. So if I go to, let's see, we're going to zoom in here so that you can take a look. Look over my shoulder here as I'm kind of going through and take a look and see what's actually going on here. So I go to www.hp.com and in hp.com we can see the new HP as it's early November here. We got HP Inc and HP Enterprise. I'm going to go to the support drop down and software and drivers just like I'm downloading you know a printer driver. So printers on the left here the way that I've set it up now. I've got my CM4540, which is what we're doing the upgrade on here today. And I can see all the different versions that have popped up here. And I've got one highlighted because I chose it earlier. But it really doesn't matter which one. It's all the same firmware. So I'm going to choose this one instead. It's going to take me to the page where I can then look at which operating system do I have in order to do the upload of the firmware for this. So from here, I can take a look at, let's see, what's my operating system for this one? I've got Windows 7 Professional 64-bit, um, and I can click on that. I do want to stress the point that sometimes you click on your OS and you don't find firmware listed there. What do you do at that point in time? Well, what you can do is if you scroll down to the bottom here, they oftentimes will have something called OS Independent. So it doesn't matter what your operating system is. And I'm going to click on that one. A lot of times you'll find firmware here when you won't find it in other places. Here's our firmware. I can choose that. Inside here, I've got the readme file. I can download just the readme file, which again tells me what the fixes are. It also tells me all the different methods to do upload of firmware to this particular device. So it gives me the step by step. So if you're going, gee, where is this information? Here it is. I could download or I can gather more information. Uh, this is the full bundle, so this has got all the information. But what we're stressing here to start off is, here's my firmware date code. Like I had the firmware date code on my configuration page here. Do I have a newer version on the page here, on my screen here? Yes, I do. Okay, I can download the firmware and then I can up, you know, send it to the machine. So go through the download process, I download the firmware, which I did earlier. So I've got that in the file all ready to go here. So what I want to do instead is I'm going to open up another tab. And now I'm going to put in the IP address of the printer. So I've got 10.32. Oops. 20.77. Did I fat finger that? No, I think I got it. Good. And here's my device status. And I have no tabs across the top. So I need to go sign in to this printer. So I've got my password. And once I do that, hey, look at that. I've got all my different tabs across the top. Normally, HP will put it in under the networking tab when it, for, for the firmware download, I should say. So I go to networking, and from networking, it's usually then other settings. In this machine, though, it's not in here. I should be seeing firmware as one of the tabs here. And I've learned earlier that it's not. It's one of the things I don't like about the embedded web server is sometimes it's kind of hunt and peck. They move it around. 
In this particular machine, it's under the troubleshooting tab. So I go to troubleshooting and hey, look over here on the left, I've got firmware upgrade. So I could click on firmware upgrade and then I can go browse for the file. And then, as I mentioned here earlier, I went out to go find it. So I've got my C drive and I put it in the CM4540 folder and there it is. There's my firmware for it. It's the BDL, so Bob Dar Dave Larry file uh, for it. And I can open that. And from here, it's simply click on install. And when I do the install, it's going to send the firmware back to the printer. So as it sends it up to the printer, the danger here at this point is people go, hey, I just did a firmware upgrade. I clicked on install, I saw it send, and it sent it so the firmware upgrade is done. Never, 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 never trust that. You always want to verify that the firmware actually took. I can't tell you how many times tech support will get a call from somebody say, yeah, you need to do a firmware upgrade. They do the firmware upgrade and they call back and go, it didn't fix the problem. And tech support will say, are you sure that it took? Well, it should have. Yeah, I know it should have. Did you run a config page? They go run a config page and find out it's the, still the same old number. It didn't take. What do we do? Send it again. Sometimes you need to send it two, three, four, five times before it will take. So always, always, always verify. Another way of verifying that it, you know, firmware version. I'm on my embedded web page here. And down below here, it tells me the current firmware information, which you can't see very well anymore. If you, roll, if you kind of roll back on this, you'll see the firmware version is listed there as well. Refresh the page. Did it take? Always, always verify. Because again, if it doesn't take, it's useless, right? Okay. So we've gone through, we took a look at firmware, taking a look at where do we start? Do we need to do an upgrade? Where to get firmware for the embedded web server? Getting up the embedded web server here, uh, logging in and setting it up so that I can send the firmware down to it, and then the verification process to kind of close this all up. So it seems like we've had a good day kind of put together with that. So I'd say it's time for a little Halloween candy after all this one. So with that, this is Steve Geishert with another Parts Now Tech Tip. M&Ms, good. Mm.